Well, I've grown a lot. You know, I, I'm a little taller. No, um, I've grown a lot spiritually and, 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 and maturity-wise, hopefully, although my kids might disagree a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I feel like I've really um, grown in my understanding of working with people and groups. I guess when I first started at Disney, I just was, you know, starry-eyed, thinking that, you know, I would just be drawing these great Disney classics, which actually, i got to say, I was a part of and I'm blessed to have been a part of. But I didn't really understand uh, that it's such a team effort. You know, I thought of it as just my part. But making these films, and particularly as I moved into directing, it really is about a team. It really is about working with others. And I learned so much about just the social politics aspect of, working in a corporate environment and, you know, the politics that go involved with, that are involved with that and that sort of thing that, you know, some, some negative, some positive, but through the journey, I've grown a lot to have a better understanding and a bigger picture of, of making these films. Um, and, and they are, it's a business and it's an art. So when I was a kid, when I was young, all I thought about was the art, you know, but now I have a, a, a much rounder, fuller view of it all. Well, even when I was on Mulan as a director, and I had to go to a ton of meetings, and Disney is not- notorious for meetings. We have meetings just to plan for meetings sometimes. But I, I would break away, and I would I would insist with the people that were working on my schedule, production managers and assistants, I would just insist that I have several hours a day to actually animate, to go back to what I loved, what I was passionate about, so that I wasn't just me, this this kind of corporate executive me as a director, I could actually just concentrate on what I love, being the me that is the artist that is creating a character and enjoying the passion of bringing a character to life in a scene. And so I I did animate several scenes in the movie, um, even though that was probably the toughest thing to to steal that time away, to sit at the desk every day and do it. Um, I was able to do that. that. that, that helps with my sanity a little bit in the making of that movie because I, I had to remind myself that I'm an artist first, you know. I'm not just an executive or a, you know, a, a management uh, person that, that tells people what to do, that I actually create art myself and that we're all creating art together as a group. And that's really what I was passionate about. That's really what sparked, you know, life into my day. And I just tried to steal those times to remind myself of that. You know, it it really doesn't. Um, it, it really doesn't. But I, I do say, I will say that, and it's great that we're we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of Mulan because it's uh, now considered a Disney classic and it's traditional hand-drawn animation, whereas today the norm is really CG or computer-generated animation. Um, so when I look back at it, uh, there's there's similarities and there's differences, I guess, but the main similarities and the main element that that is the same, it hasn't changed for all of us in this animation business, is that we're making a movie. And there's certain elements of story and character and emotion and heart, and um, all those elements are still part of the animation process, part of the movie-making process today, no matter what the technology. And those are the things that I think we as creators, because I do a lot of CG stuff now too, uh, those are the things that that are, I'm still passionate about, that still hasn't changed, um, bringing the characters to life. It's just a it's just a different medium. So so I don't have a pencil in my hand. I have a mouse. Well, you know, yeah, it's different, and maybe one's a little less intuitive than the other, but um, the outcome is the same, and that's what I'm always about. It's a process, maybe a different process to a certain degree. But that process gets me the same end result, which is what is exciting to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like those musicians, I I crave uh, the organic element, the intuitive element of pencil to paper. To me, there's nothing like a funny drawing. And, um, you know, in, in, in CG animation, it's really like working with puppets, and you have to kind of create that funny drawing, that funny image. But... There's something about me just putting my hand to paper. I can kind of, I just feel like my emotions can come through in a very direct way, that way that I can't get it through a mouse and, and a cord and electronics and a program and all that. So I, I really feel like uh, I would love to see 
2D animation, traditional animation, come back in some bigger way. And I don't know if it'll be at Disney or somewhere else, but uh, yeah, I think I think there's still room for it in this world, and I think there's still a desire for it. It's just, uh, you know, it's all about money and politics and, and um, executives making the right decisions and choices. Some of those things are out of my control, and I just got to give it over to God and say, Maybe one day, Lord, if that's what you want for me, I'm ready. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and that's one of the things that really drew me to uh, wanting to direct this movie when they first asked me to come on board and work with Barry Cook, my co-director on it. Uh, it was already a good year's worth of work and development already on the film when I came on to it. And I saw where it was going. And what I gravitated to first was the story of this character and that she was a unique heroine in the Disney canon of, you know, princesses and, and other heroines that had come before her. And I was just starting to have kids. I was married, and I was just starting to build a family. And I had two daughters at the time, soon to have three, which I didn't know at the time. But I have three daughters, and to me, to be able to bring to life um, a new Disney role model, a new kind of Disney heroine, was a big responsibility, something that I felt very passionate about. Um, because I wanted to show the world that there could be a girl that didn't need to be saved by a Prince Charming or, a, you know, a male figure coming in and affecting her story. And Mulan is that character. She doesn't change from frame one to frame 2025. She is consistent in who she is and what she wants. The theme of the movie is uh, to be true to thyself, to be true to thy, thy own self. So it really is all about her being true to who she is and really changing the world around her. So she doesn't change like Belle or, or Ariel and stuff. Um, they, they change who they are to uh, to join a new world. She creates a new world by staying who, who she is within that world. And that was that was huge. And to be able to share that with that legacy now with my daughters is, is really an honor for me. 